Welcome everybody to There's an App for That, utilizing the full power of the Domo app platform to better your business. I'm Ryan T. Wilson, CTO of Build Intelligence, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you all about how the Domo app platform can better your business and how you can leverage the, all the APIs and features. A little bit about uh, myself. I currently run several businesses as the major Domo, and I have developed about 40 different uh, Domo connectors and about 20 different Domo custom apps. And today I'll be showing one of my most recent Domo custom apps that was built for the Flying Frog Car Wash as an example. So our agenda here today is we're gonna start off with a little bit of background that'll be necessary to kind of go over what Flying Frog Car Wash's problems were and how we use the Domo app platform and all its APIs to address that problem. Then we'll dive into getting technical and we'll, we'll look into each of the Domo APIs with specific developer tips. Flying Frog Car Wash is a chain of self-serve car washes located mostly throughout the western half of the US. Uh, each of our sites has a site manager that is somewhere between part-time and full-time depending on the location and they are assigned a mobile device. That mobile device is the only device they use to do all their all their uh, data entry. I'm taking a high level look at, well, what are the kind of high, high level classes of problems that Domo apps can solve? Starting off, we'll be looking at context switching. For example, the, the constant switching of going back and forth between Domo and some other place you might be entering data. The second major problem uh, Domo apps solve is data entry frustrations, especially related to spreadsheets. Finally, we'll look at integrating your business with the Domo platform in the Domo platform. This is both making use of data we already have in Domo, as well as moving outwards from Domo and connecting to our other system software. All right, so let's take a brief look at the Domo app APIs that are available to us. So starting off, we have the data API, and this is really about getting data that's already in Domo. And in fact, you're already used to interacting with this. Anytime you build a normal Domo card, you're already selecting a data set to, to power your visualization from there. The data API provides exactly that for custom apps. Moving on to the user and group API, this API lets you get information, avatars, groups that a given user is in. You can use this for a variety of things, such as showing a user's avatar within the Domo custom app, or automatically filling in a name field when you're entering data. The meat and potatoes of this presentation focuses around the AppDB API. This is the API that allows you to go beyond visualization with a Domo custom app and actually use it to store, update, edit, delete data, all from within the Domo platform that can be synced directly back to your, your Domo data center and used in data flows, cards, etc. The files API is where we can store and manage files. Now these are arbitrary files, but mostly in the examples I'll be showing here, we'll be using photos. The Domo Actions API is an API that allows you to interact with external systems to Domo. This allows you to perform authentication with third-party platforms and perform things such as adding a new record to your CRM or updating a record in your CRM, etc. You'll notice off to the side, I've labeled a couple of these with some colors and text. These will be displayed next to any image that is using that API as I go through this next section. Starting with context switching. Why is context switching bad? Well, when we start using a variety of online platforms, we start to get into the situation where we end up moving towards one software solves one problem kind of thing, but ends up creating the problem of okay, well now I need to go to Domo to see what I need to do today um, or see what data I might need to enter based off of uh, data flows. All this overhead of switching back and forth, especially when you're on something like a mobile device where really multitasking is not something super easy to do in a lot of cases, this starts to really add up and dig into your efficiency. The training and onboarding for new employees is also much more difficult because not only do they have to understand their, their role as an employee and what they need to do, they also need to remember just how to get back and forth between all these different software they're, they're switching between to perform their role. So how has this really affected the Flying Fry Car Wash? Well, as I mentioned earlier, all these site managers are just given a mobile phone. So at one point, a lot of their data entry was done in a spreadsheet. And so they'd, they'd go to a Domo card and see that 
you know, they needed to perform these actions today and those actions, you know, also require some data entry. And then they'd have to go find a spreadsheet on their mobile phone and enter in on the mobile phone and then go back to Domo to look what they need to do next. And all that, all that switching gets uh, really complicated. We ended up spending a lot more time just training people how to go back and forth between Domo and a spreadsheet than we actually did, you know, teaching them what they need to do. So Flying Frog's solution was to replace that spreadsheet with a, a Domo custom app. Now site managers just have one place they need to go. They can go directly to their dashboard that they were already using and using to guide their actions throughout the day. And when an action comes up that they need to take that revolves around data entry, they can just scroll down on the page, hop in the app and enter away. So for example, we have two cards on here on their typical dashboard where we have site manager purchases to approve or refunds that didn't have check numbers entered. Both these were common actions that an employee would come look at their dashboard and you know see these audit style cards and see, okay, I need to take an action. I need to go enter data somewhere. But then it was a big hassle to switch back and forth uh, to those spreadsheets and then enter the data. Now they just scroll down on the dashboard and they're there. Spreadsheet frustrations. I think everyone's had these um, around here. When it comes to spreadsheets, they start off really simple, and for simple things, they can be a great way to supplement your, your data in Domo with some more data sets to fill in the holes between uh, your different software sets. But as these things kind of grow and develop, they start getting more and more complex and really hard to understand. Uh, my president, who built the original spreadsheet that these site managers were using to enter, had dozens of tabs which made it very, very confusing as to like where they need to go to enter what and is all the data I need to enter for this one action in this one tab or do I need to go to you know, different, different tabs in this uh, spreadsheet to enter all the data. The usual suspects when it comes to spreadsheet frustrations end up being the following. Lack of data validation. The cognitive overhead of adding in these fields you're specifically using just to join the data back in in Domo in a data flow to you know, make, it, make it useful and relate to the rest of your, your business. So then there becomes the problem of multiple people needing to use the same spreadsheet at the same time. It's very easy to get into a situation where two people are using the same spreadsheet at the same time and one person accidentally deletes a row, causing the spreadsheet to shift up and the user to enter data into the cell they didn't intend to. It's also very easy to accidentally hit something on the keyboard and maybe accidentally delete a row or add a character to another cell there. Add on top of that, now you have to find a spot where the spreadsheet you know, needs to live that is accessible to multiple people and where it's easy to connect it to Domo. Flying Frog has seen almost all these issues in the wild, where I'm sure all of you have experienced trying to type into a date field in Excel and then suddenly Excel wants to reformat everything and it thinks it's a string now and that breaks stuff in, in Domo because all the formatting gets off. Or someone going to enter in a, a number and, and typing in a letter instead accidentally. So between this kind of overhead of, oh, I have to think of what this ID is, how many zeros does it have, you know, unintentional edits just really were a source of frustration for both the site managers and myself managing all these, all these custom custom data flows we built out to run our business. So that's where we stepped in with a Domo custom app. We can solve almost all these problems just immediately. So for a date field, well, let's make it so they can't enter an incorrect date. For something like a bill amount, well, that's something that can only be a whole number or corn amount, that's something that should be a decimal number. We can make it so these site managers only get the user interface they need to type in the information that is valid. So just by moving this into a Domo custom app right away, we've already solved a lot of our issues with, with spreadsheet frustrations. So you might be thinking now, well, what about desktop? Desktop has access to a full keyboard, so, well, we can't just hide any, any uh, alphanumeric characters that uh, aren't numbers. With HTML validation within these Domo custom apps, even on a desktop experience, we can, we can show the error right away to the user and indicate to them how to fix it. And, well, we can prevent them from even submitting new data if the form is not valid. So just right there, we've already made this experience much simpler for the site managers who are already on a mobile phone, but we also made it a reasonable experience if someone was using it from a desktop app. 
uh, such as maybe one of our corporate site managers is entering something in there and he's using one of his laptops instead of a mobile phone. Now on top of really already solving all the, all the frustrations we had with, with spreadsheets by just converting our data entry mechanism from being a spreadsheet to a Domo custom app, we also ended up seeing a lot of other benefits that just came along um, and were you know, completely unintended as far as like what we were specifically solving when we set out to do this. The first major benefit is we just saw that there was significantly less data entry required to capture the same amount of data. We can use things such as the, the user's API to automatically populate a site manager's name. We can use things such as the uh, groups API to automatically populate their, their site location into the form. Other fields such as the, the total amount in a uh, cash deposit can just automatically be calculated based off of what a user enters into the bill amount and the coin amount. It also makes this a lot easier for a site manager to go in and enter data because now they're not going into a spreadsheet and needing to scroll down to the next uh, empty row of data to enter in new information. They're only seeing what they need to see to take that action. They don't have to see any other entries that they've made previously when they're going just to enter new data. They just pop right in, they can enter their data and get out. On top of that, now we don't have to worry about, well, where do we, where do we host this spreadsheet and how do we connect it to Domo kind of thing? How often does it run? That kind of thing. We don't have to think about that because we're already contained right within Domo. The data is intended for Domo, it lives within Domo, it's generated within Domo. We found that, well, now there's additional information that we couldn't capture previously using a spreadsheet. But now that we're using a Domo custom app, we can expand the amount of data we're actually collecting. So for example, we can attach photos, which that's really hard to do with a spreadsheet. You could host it online somewhere, I guess, and post a link to it, but that just gets messy right away. From within the Domo custom app, we can just take the photo right there of say something like a, a cash deposit receipt and have it immediately attached right, right in with the, the record to be used wherever we want throughout Domo. Additionally, we found that some, some types of data entry became significantly easier to enter and use within Domo because of the fact that we're using a Domo custom app. For example, in this screen here, I'm showing the data API and how it looks from a user's end when they're configuring the card with a, a Domo custom app versus the schema that the developer chooses on the side. The developer can say, well, we need some data here and we'll leave it up to whoever creates the card to select the appropriate data set to be able to populate this. So now instead of manually entering in something like a vendor name, we can connect our accounting data set directly with the card and populate a dropdown so users enter a vendor that is exactly the same as it's entered in accounting. Why, are, why is the Domo custom app platform you know, really powerful? We can use Domo apps to toss out the need to juggle all these different apps around and really stick within Domo driving action. We can fill in the missing pieces of our business by adding in supplementary data to your existing systems to continue driving action in Domo. And lastly, we can make data entry faster, easier, with less errors. So here's the end result of how this app turned out for Flying Frog Car Wash. We went from having to switch back and forth between a Domo dashboard and an Excel sheet to something that's very quick and easy for a user to enter. We even use built-in features of web browser technology to make something like taking a picture easy. And boom, just like that, without leaving Domo, they've done the same exact job they were doing previously, but they were doing it faster, less data entry errors, and including more information. All right, so time to get technical. And don't be afraid if you're not a developer and you don't understand any of the JavaScript or TypeScript snippets I'm about to show here. There's still some high level concepts on how these things fit together that you can take away from this and apply even if you're a non-developer. All right, starting with the Domo Data API. Integrating existing data sets with your app is basically what we're trying to accomplish here. We already have some data in Domo and we want to get it into our app to use it. So we have a, a few different ways of actually getting this data. We can um, do the normal uh, query using the, the data API, and this, this allows you to do some things like filtering, aggregation, beast modes. There are, are ways to paginate it so you don't like get every single row, you just get chunks at a time. And then there's a SQL API, which is 
the SQL you're used to with, you know, some slight exceptions, you can't do joins. So how do we make use of this data API other than just visualization? Well, we can make data entry much easier for a user. We can take existing data already in Domo, such as maybe vendors from your accounting system, and make it easy for a user to enter in a vendor, regardless of whether they know the vendor by a vendor number from the accounting system, or they just know the vendor's name. They can type either, and by populating the, the state of the app from the Domo data set, we created ourselves a little autocomplete search box. We can get the data entered, uh, formatted correctly, all while making it easier for the user to enter it. Further, we can kind of take this and create data entry to really kind of act as like almost a translation between different departments. Very common for different software in different departments to really kind of refer to one concept or one thing by different maybe IDs or names. Well, here once again, making use of the Domo Data API to make data entry easy, we can make it easy to enter both these things in. And now we have data linking these two together. We can then take that data and make a card that is now accessible to people in either department and they can then filter down by what they're accustomed to. They don't have to go, okay, what is a job number? What's the job number for this fixed asset? What's the fixed asset for this job number, et cetera. Time for a first developer tip. One of the most common mistakes I see people making when making a Domo app and using the data API is forgetting to override the on data update. If you forget to do this, the app will refresh anytime that data set updates while a user is using it. So while for visualizations, that's really nice because it immediately refreshes the, the visualization to reflect the latest data. If a user is midway through filling out a form and suddenly the page refreshes, that's an awful experience for them and they often lose work. All right, moving to the AppDB API. This is, this is what allows us to really take our custom apps beyond just visualization and allow it to be a powerful tool for data entry. All right. Now, one of the things I see that confuses most developers that are just starting to use the AppDB API is just how this is set up behind the scenes. So we have two things. We have our AppDB database, which is part of our custom app card. And then we can enable this database to sync back to our Domo data center. Now, this AppDB database uh, is a database that is a document database. and you end up creating collections, which are roughly the equivalent of tables. Now, each of these individual collections can be enabled to sync with the Domo data center uh, individually or not. Now, here's where most people get confused. Well, wait, why is there so many data sets showing up in my data center right now? Well, this AppDB gets created every time you create a new card with your custom app. So if you create one card and put it on another on one page and a different card and put it on another page, you will now have two copies of these data sets showing up in your, in your data center. And each of these apps is completely oblivious to whatever data is in the other ones. This can be a useful feature if we want to silo the data by, you know, say a department. We can create two separate apps on different pages and give users access to those pages and then behind the scenes in the data center append these things together and do what we want in the data center. But if that's not the behavior we want, you have to be careful that when you want a card to display on multiple pages that you do the move save as thing so you're displaying the same card instance on multiple pages rather than creating new cards themselves and thus new AppDB collections. As mentioned before, because of the design of how the AppDB API works, we can use this to uh, implement some level of security features off the bat. But when you're first starting to create a Domo custom app, you should take into account all the different ways you can apply security to the AppDB API. So for example, there is a collection level security where you can allow users or groups to have access to read or write or delete or not have those things based off of what user they are or if they're in a specific group. In beta currently, there is a document level uh, security feature. And for more information on that, visit the developer.domo.com portal and look at the documentation there. But when you're making a new app for data entry, start by thinking of who needs to use it, what security you need, and build from there. 
Don't get into a situation where you've shoehorned yourself into a corner by not planning ahead of time. So now let's take a peek into what this looks like from our, our development end. Similar to the data API, which has a mapping collections in the, the manifest.json file, the AppDB has a collections property in here. This is where we can list out all the collections we want to create ahead of time and have them automatically be created when we publish the app. It's also where we can specify what we want to sync with our Domo data center. And if we want to sync one of these collections to our data center, we need to provide a schema. Because the AppDB database is a document level database and can have nested properties, we need to provide a schema so that it can be mapped from our potentially nested data structure to a flat row level structure that can be easily formatted to a SQL table. All right, time for another developer tip. When it comes to developing one of these Domo custom apps, you wanna be able to develop in a separate environment from what people are actually using. My advice for this is to simply publish your app twice and change the name of the name ID and proxy ID properties to have prod before them when you're developing and remove them and put dev in front of the other ones when you're publishing a real one. This will end up with two separate apps showing up in your asset catalog in Domo and will allow you to have two different versions of the app running at the same time. That way, if your app updates and you need to add a new collection or introduce some sort of breaking change, you can develop and test this without worrying about affecting existing users that are using the production version. And it also gives you a separate, separate layer of data sets that are test data only, development data only. Moving on to what it looks like actually using this app, AppDB. API. So for the most part, it's relatively straightforward. You're going to be performing actions such as retrieving all your documents, creating a new document, editing a document, or updating a document. Most all these are done through simple HTTP requests, but as you start to use this in more places, this can kind of get a little bit, uh, little bit verbose. So Signal Ventures has created a NPM library to simplify this a little bit. Rather than writing a couple dozen lines of code here on the right using the raw API, we can use this package to simplify it down to a lot more one-liner style interactions with the AppDB. This package both has a very simple API that's unopinionated and allows you to work directly with the code shown on the previous slide, and also a more opinionated API that worked well with what Signal Ventures was doing building their apps. Both these APIs can be used relatively painlessly with very popular state management systems and uh, front-end libraries such as React or Vue. If you're interested in this library, see it at github.com slash signalv slash domoappdb. When you're creating sync-enabled connections for user configurable fields, display readable values to the user, but store an ID to join on in a data flow. So for example, if we have a location dropdown field we want to make available to the user, but we want someone like a corporate manager to be able to change the dropdown options, we should create a sync enabled connection and display the, the, display the readable value to the user, but store the ID. Why? Because if we want to rename the dropdown item later on, it allows us to painlessly do so without having to worry about existing entries there because we're storing the ID rather than the raw value that might change later on. All right, moving on to the files API. This allows us to manage files related to your Domo app right within Domo. Storing and retrieving the files is fairly simple, but one thing to take, take into account is what permissions you want these files to have as you're uploading them. Your available options are public, and what this means is that any authenticated user in your Domo instance is able to see this file, download this file, etc. You can do permissions by user, specify specific users that have access to this file, or you can specify permissions by group. Now here's the thing that we think is really cool about the file API. You can use the file API to display images in Domo table cards that are related to the records you're creating. So for example, we have a lot of construction jobs where we want to be able to see our interior color and our exterior colors 
right from in our table views without having to leave the app or follow a link or find something else. And using the file API combined with the Domo app DB API allows us to do just that. Bring them all together. Design around the user. Really our goal here is to make the easiest path for the user to complete their data entry. So start off by designing with, with whatever device that will be used in mind. If they're gonna be primarily using this from a mobile device, make sure it's really well suited towards being used on a mobile device. If it's being used on a desktop, well, it still might be a good idea to make it usable on a mobile device if that's potentially something that might happen. It's much harder to go back after you've designed it and make something mobile than it is to start from the beginning. Use the data API to make it easy for users to enter data. Whether that means pulling in existing data and having dropdowns, or something shown earlier like an autocomplete. Third, make full use of data validation. Make it very clear to the user if they're entering data wrong, and if it's possible, prevent users from being able to enter data wrong. Finally, calculate anything you can or pull anything you can rather than having a user enter it. This might be something as simple as using the user API to populate a, a username uh, rather than manually entering it. It might be something like looking at a user's group and adding it in there. It might be something like, like determining a value based on other values entered in the form. Make it easy for the user. So here's an example of all these APIs combined together that Signal Ventures is using for uh, vertical construction. We make full use of the data API to make data entry easy with job numbers by pulling from existing uh, sources of data. We use the files API to make it so we can upload things like our interior color packages and associate them right with the records we're entering. So in other places throughout Domo, we can see those. So let's see a full example of combining all these together. Signal Ventures is using this for their vertical production. We're making full use of the data API to make it easy to enter in fields using data that already exists in Domo. We're using the files API to attach additional photos for things like our interior color packages, where we can then use in other Domo table cards to display this information in line with other data. We're making full use of data validation to make sure that if a field's required, a user has to enter it before they they submit the, the data and it shows up in our data flows. So by combining all these, these APIs together, we create something that's very easy for the user to enter in data and also more powerful than if we were to resort to something like a spreadsheet. All right, time for another developer tip. When making use of multiple Domo APIs, especially the AppDB API and the File API, Think of how errors in one API might affect the outcome of others. So for example, if we have a form that allows a user to upload a picture and save that picture's file ID with a AppDB record, so it can be used somewhere else, like a Domo table card, how do we handle if the file upload fails, but the form submission doesn't? Well, it's better to try to upload the file first, and if the file upload fails, indicate that to the user and either retry for them or let the user know what they can do to attempt this again and resolve the problem. By failing first with the, the Domo file upload, we prevent an inconsistent state where a user could upload a AppDB document that has no file ID. So in summary, what we're trying to do here is really map out the quickest path to action for a user. Make it as fast and easy and error-proof as possible for the user to perform the action they need. Make use of all the Domo APIs you can to provide this functionality. By combining these APIs together, we can provide new features that were previously unavailable in other methods of data entry. And once again, do all the heavy lifting for the user. Make it as easy for them to get from A to B as possible. If the user doesn't have to do it, the user shouldn't be doing it. We should be handling it in the Domo app. Thanks everyone for watching. 
I'm Ryan Wilson, CTO of Build Intelligence and Signal Ventures. Please feel free to reach out to me at ryan at signalv.com with any questions you still might have.